Okay, so uh, welcome to the last talk in this evening. Uh, I'm Michael Matz from the Toolchain team. Um, and this talk is going to be about speeding up the BFD linker, uh, traditionally known as the, as the GNU linker, but as being utils contains now meanwhile two linkers called and the BFD linker. Uh, let's be precise. Uh, for those who don't know anymore what linkers are, I have a hopefully quick introduction to what linkers are and what they are doing. So from 2,000 meters at top. At its core, linkers are fancy file copiers. Um, they split files and copy them in different orders uh, to the output file. So we have, we have on the left side file one, that's my input file, and on the right side uh, the output file. The input file contains two pieces, we call them sections. We have here text and a data section. The text section contains uh, two instructions, knobs, and the data section contains a number, 41. And when we link this file, the linker places the one section into an output section and the data section into a different output section and uh, uh, retains the two knobs and the 41, and we also have here a symbol named S, which is marking the place of the second knob. That is a function, my function S, which does nothing. Um, that is what the linker is doing with section contents, it just copies over. Uh, what it also does is it assigns positions uh, to the sections in the input file. They basically are without any position, the sections have a length, and that's about it. In an output file, they actually do have an assigned position. I arbitrarily chose 1,000 and 2,000 as the two positions for the text and data segment. So that should be pretty clear. Um, if we introduce a second file, nothing changes. So the second file contains just the text sections with a, with a new label, G, that also has a as a knob instruction. Um, what the linker is doing, it usually uh, leaves sections of the same characteristics together. So in this case, the char characteristic is uh, code or data. So it puts all the code um, sections together and leaves the data sections alone at a different place. Uh, not much changes, uh, text still starts at 1,000, now just the text segment is a little bit larger because the second, no, the third knob is included as well, and data still starts at 2,000 because there was enough space uh, after 2003. We have another data section, indeed nothing changes, the second data section also is put at the end of the data segment. Now, let's get a bit more, uh, this will be a bit more interesting now. Uh, uh, why a linker is not just a data copier, it is a linker. It uh, links things together, and what that actually means is it, it handles references from sections to other sections. References are usually done by symbols. There are other ways, we will come to that. So, what I want here to express is I have a, a data, a couple of bytes, four bytes or eight bytes, an address, and I want it to contain the final value of the S symbol in the same file. Uh, so what I want to, the S symbol is of course, as it is uh, marking the second knob, it is placed in at address 2001, and this is what I want to have here. This is, some, this is what the linker needs to produce for me, and the magic how to do that is relocations. Um, when I reference the data symbol S from one section, from, from, yeah, from a section, then what the assembler is actually doing is it emits some metadata uh, for data section one uh, that basically says, yeah, at offset zero of this data sections, please put in, at the end of the day, after linking, please put in the value of the text sections plus, uh, beginning of the text section plus one. So relocations, des relocations describe basically how to compute a value in a, in a formalized way. There are, there are only so and so many ways how to express this calculation. Um, 
and where to put this value after it's calculated. So in this case, as I said, uh, first offset of the data sections, please put in the value that you can compute by adding one to the beginning of the text section. And indeed, beginning of the text section, the linker has decided uh, to be put on 1,000. 1,000 plus 1 is 1,001, and this is what the linker will put into that section. So, uh, my second data section also contains the symbol G. In this case, we have a different type of relocation. Uh, if you look at the details, we will see that this G is a global symbol, whereas S is not a global symbol, uh, which means the, uh, uh, this S can not come from any other files, so it could directly um, already say, okay, I know this is going to be this S, and therefore the place of S is text section plus one. Whereas this G is a global symbol, it might come from other files, uh, so it is not completely sure that it will be this G that will be chosen by the linker at the end, um, which means we need to leave enough inf information to calculate the value here, and enough information is simply G. Put in the value of symbol G at that place. And indeed, the value of symbol G, the linker has decided that, is 2002, uh, which is what it also will be putting in there. Okay, so uh, fancy file copying with a twist, it can rewrite some section contents, contents according to metadata. Uh, oh yeah, another example, so if I put another data symbol here, with also symbol G, um, well, it, Linker will place the same value into that part of the data section. Now, uh, one tricky thing, of course, is uh, I will also want to know the address of printf in my second data section. The assembler is not knowing anything particular about printf or G or anything. It puts in a relocation against uh, the printf at please put the value at offset 8. I'm assuming that these entries are all 8 bytes long. Uh, so now, but the linker, <laughs> after seeing the whole input, doesn't know where printf is. So what value, what value is it going to place here? Well, people will probably recognize dynamic executables retain undefined symbols, and um, that they will eventually, at program loading time, will be uh, fulfilled uh, by the dynamic linker. But in order to have enough meta information in the executable to fill in the question marks, we need another relocation also in the output file, so-called dynamic relocation. Please add the value at the offset 2024, uh, put in the value of printf. 2024 is because this is the offset of the question marks. Uh, that is offset. Uh, address 2000, address 2008, 2016, and 2024. As I said, I'm assuming that all the entries are eight bytes long. So, we can say, therefore, we have understood what linking is. First, it decides uh, which input sections need to be copied. Not all of them will always be copied. Um, then it needs to assign positions to those sections that it decided to output. Uh, implicitly, that also assigns positions to symbols, because those are always within a certain section. Um, then it knows, after having determined the layout, then it knows how the relocations can be handled and the values that the relocations described can be computed, uh, if they are at all computable. If so, then the linker will put in the place uh, that is described by the relocation the computed value. If it's not yet possible to compute the value, well, well, then it needs to put in a different relocation into the output file and leave it for later for the dynamic linker. Uh, after that is done, then the copying process starts. It takes all the input sections and puts them into the, into the right positions into the output file that was earlier decided. Usually, uh, resolving relocations and therefore computation of values and so on is done at the same time of the copy, uh, so that the same data is not uh, basically touched twice. Uh, so what it is copying is basically an adjust, adjusted input section. So that is what the linker is doing. That is very easy, and therefore it should be very 
easy to write something that is fast. Mm, some people indeed achieved this. My test case is, as I'm from the Tushin team, is our C compiler. Some little statistics there, many, many input files, even more sections. The compressed input is 500 megabytes, give or take, and the executable output is 200 megabytes. This is including the bug information, which is why it's a bit surprisingly large. And uh, the test case I'm using for all this is simply perf start, running three times, and then the linker in question. I'm ignoring build IDs, and then either with or without threads, some linkers are multi-threaded, and then I'm creating this executable with all the necessary arguments, which are too long to list. Uh, so, what linkers we have? We have, in Binutils, we have the BFD linker, the gold linker, and a recent, uh, recent um, development uh, is Mold. That's not in Binutils, that's a, that's a new, new project. Um, that's uh, the fastest linker up to now that we know about. So you can see, gold single-threaded is five seconds, multi-threaded four seconds, mold single-threaded is three and a half seconds, uh, multi-threaded 1.3 seconds. Uh, and this, at the start of this, uh, Micha speeds up the BFD linker, uh, the BFD linker was eight seconds so, uh, for this test case on this machine when the power is plugged in. Um, so yeah, that's uh, indeed, uh, there, there were reasons for people to write faster linkers because indeed the BFD linker is not the fastest on earth. Um, one particular interesting thing is that Mold, uh, the developer of Mold indeed um, managed to, this is a fierce four CPU uh, machine and it actually uh, managed to really get nearly to the optimum level of parallelism with, with this linker. So that's, that's a nice achievement. Um, uh, the, the overall CPU time of mold is also five seconds in the multi-threaded case. It's just that because, yeah, well, it could use four cores. The wall clock time is just a second. Um, but in any case, on all kinds of measures, the BFD linker is the slowest one. And this is bad. And this is what I wanted to fix or start fixing. So let's look at uh, our performance profile of the starting phase of the, of the uh, starting point of the BFD linker, which was something autumn last year. Um, okay, so we have many things. I colored them and already noted what is what, basically. So all the green stuff is everything which is lip set that is decompression. Um, then we have uh, the, the very light stuff that is random relocation processing and symbol table processing. Uh, we have this uh, blue things are a section selection, I'll come to that. Um, and yeah, section selection around if you add everything together, plus those that are not shown here, then you will get around 10% runtime is section selection. And then the biggest guy in town is uh, section merging, um, which I'm also going to talk about a little bit in detail. So the first thing is I'm now going in the order in which I uh, worked on things. Uh, so autumn last year, so winter last year, I was working on section selection. Um, as I said earlier, the linker needs to decide which output files, it, uh, sorry, which input sections it, uh, it wants to copy and then where they should be placed. Uh, the first determination for this is uh, creating an association between input sections and output sections. For instance, very simple one, uh, put all sections that are named the same into the same output sections all together. Uh, so that is the very simple uh, way to do, very quick. You order then a bit by section flex, for instance, you put all read-only sections together, you put all executable sections together, all writable sections together, and you're done. Uh, that is very inflexible, but fast. Uh, then you can rely on certain Unix-C conventions. Um, 
which is, for instance, the convention is that, that code sections are always called dot .text dot .something, or maybe without suffix. Uh, so data sections, writable data sections, dot .data something, read-only data sections, dot .ro data something. Um, uh, then there are the BSX sections for, for um, uh, zeroed data. Uh, and similar conventions. So what you can do as a next step is basically you sort by section name and then uh, uh, put all the sections with a well-known prefix sort of into the well-known output sections. That's also very fast. And then various variations of that scheme to actually deal with the real world uh, because uh, all three linkers are capable of building most every Linux package that we have, um, which is not going to work if you do it in a simple or in the second simplest way. There are various hard codings that you need to do in the linkers to deal with that. Or you are the BFD linker and you have a grand super scheme of things, how to make it possible for the user to fiddle with this uh, assignment uh, of input to output sections. So here's an example of the actual linker script um, that we are using for, um, uh, I think it's from the linker script used for creating um, position-dependent executables. So what it actually means. So the output section text consists of all these things. And all these things are, uh, this star is all, all files, and then sections that are named text unlikely or text dot, well, star unlikely, that these are globs, or text unlikely dot star. Um, put them into the output text session. Then next, uh, from e equally all files, so text exit and text exit star and startup and so on and so forth, uh, and so forth. Uh, all these things will be put into the output text section. And here, I just uh, for demonstration purposes, because it's not in the actual linker script, I wanted to demonstrate what the star is. It actually is a file name. So special.o and all special sections from the special.o input file, please also go to the output text section. Um, the linker script is a fairly large thing, contains also many other directives. For instance, here there's this sort directive um, embedded into that, that the GNU linker can um, evaluate. Well, obviously, it simply sorts all the sections that are named text sorted. <laughs> um, so both components of each of these things are globs, so the file name is a glob and the section name is a glob as well. And what the linker was doing is, these are the wild section um, entries of the profile that we saw, is it goes through all input files, then through all input sections, and then through all, for each of those sections, it goes through all the globs in the, in the linker script and, and asks, okay, does the section name so-and-so match this glob? No, next one, yes, uh -huh, I record this into the output uh, section. Um, we have 150 uh, such globs in the, in the linker script. Give or take, depends always a bit on the version and which, uh, if you are creating executable or a shared library or so on. But roundabout, that's the, that's the number. And uh, matching is, is not fast. It's, it's essentially calling fn match uh, on, a, on a string and a glob. And, uh, and that is done until a match is found, which you can basically say, okay, in, in, in average cases, uh, a section name needs to be matched against 50 globs uh, until the matching one is found. Um, for instance, if you have the data section, but all the text globs come before, it needs to be tested against all the text globs uh, just to find they don't match uh, until eventually coming to the data globs, which will then match. Um, so that is, this is actually what, uh, what, this is actually already in, uh, an optimization, this walk wild section spec three, wild two, specs one, wild one, specs two, wild one, is actually already an optimization for certain kinds of globs. <laughs> uh, because, I'm sorry, uh, because as you see, uh, globs have, have, have often very usual forms. For instance, here there's no glob at all, text.unlikely, no glob character, or the glob character is only at the end. Um, these are 
the globs that are most often used. And, uh, and for instance, in this entry, we have two globs, text exit, text exit dot star. In this entry, we have three globs, unlikely star, unlikely, unlikely star. Uh, and for all these cases, there are special cases implemented in the BFD linker because somebody found out that using just FN match for everything is even slower. So this is already an optimized, uh, the, the optimized variant. Uh, but it's still fairly slow. Uh, so that was the old approach. Uh, for all sections, look through all globs and find any that match. So what I implemented is a prefix tree for this. Um, as we just saw in the, in the linker script snippet, all the, most of the globs have a, have a certain form. They start with a textual prefix and then eventually with a, with a glob character. And then possibly a suffix, uh, but that should not interest us. So what is actually much faster to do is collect all the globs and put them into a prefix tree. Um, and then you, when you want to match a section name against the prefix tree, then you go character by, by character through that prefix tree and immediately rule out uh, large sections of the set of globs that can't possibly match. Uh, uh, match. For instance, in this case, if we say if we have a section named dot bss then you will then you will start with a dot character okay the dot character still matches and then you have a character b from bss and you find no successor of the current node uh, neither d or t match the s character and uh, the b character and therefore you know what well, that doesn't match any glob uh, whereas if you have a t character um, so dot text for instance then you match the dot character and then you match the t character and then eventually you will see oh it's the end of the tree so let's see where it points to it points to the text glob we will then eventually test that and need just one glob test instead of like uh, three glob tests assuming that the d tests come before the t tests michael mm -hmm. uh, here mm -hmm. uh, if you can please repeat the uh, the syntax in the previous slide there was uh, section dot o parenthesis dot special um, what uh, special dot or o yeah. sounds like a, a file name and then yeah. you have parenthesis what that what is that syntax yeah so um, I um, uh, maybe I went too quickly over it so um, the the atoms in a linker script are File name, parenthesis, section names. Um, always. Uh, it's just usually the file names are not interesting to anyone, which is why the usual entries look like star, any file, and then section names, so and so. And I just wanted to make it, uh, uh, put a special entry here to make it obvious that it indeed is a file name, which obviously I managed. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to reach that, <laughs> super. Uh, so what actually is needed doing, needs doing at, at the matching is not just matching the section name against the glob, but also the file name against the glob, which is why I put here in uh, match the pair input file section name against the glob. But usually, as I said, the, 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 the glob entry for the file name is usually just eh, anything goes, uh, which is then a quick special case. Yeah, so prefix three. Um, so before we actually start uh, looking at any globs, uh, we go through the section name, through the section names characters exactly one time in the whole linking process uh, to look into the, uh, walk through the prefix tree and then immediately get all the candidate globs uh, that might at all match. Um, yeah, so, uh, I've, that's the new approach, right, I think, yeah. So after much work, I yeah, got like 10%. Hmm. Uh, it's okay, uh, that's actually, uh, actually the 10% are around exactly this, what, what the profile would tell me that I could reach. I basically removed all the section selection from, uh, uh, from the profile. Not bad. Uh, then the next big block was uh, uh, section merging. Uh, that's the, 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 the red things here. Um, so that was something I tackled next. I wanted to tackle next. Section merging. So 
as I said, uh, if everything would be just file copying or blob copying, then life would be easy and no one would be interested in writing linkers. But this is one of the things uh, that are a bit, more, a bit more involved. So, for instance, the bug string sections contain, especially with C++, for instance, contain many, 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 many strings. And if you have 700 files, many of these debug sections contain the same strings all, all over again. I have a very little fake example here. Imagine these, uh, the blue and the red one, uh, sorry, the blue and the green one are two separate files. And those are string sections, content uh, that are marked mergeable. So we have the blue section contains two strings, namely foobar and funk. Uh, these are the contents, these are the offsets. So therefore, the string foobar is at place one or is offset one, and the string foo is at offset eight. Okay, so second file contains also two strings, funk and bar, uh, at offset one and six respectively. So we could just cut them together. Uh, then the, the offset for uh, the offset into the green part, offset one would basically be uh, the length of everything which is coming before that plus one, which usually is then 12 plus one would be 13, so indeed string funk could then be found in the final linked executable if you are just cutting the sections together at offset 13 and this one at offset 16, but we would have redundancies, namely the string funk would have been twice in the, uh, in the output section and of course bar uh, is part of foobar if you just adjust the offset correctly. Um, so what we actually want to have in the output is just a section containing foobar and funk uh, and we want to have sort of a mapping, the fuba string you can find at one, the funk string you can find at eight, both funk strings, of course, right? This funk string is no different from this funk string because it's just a string. Well, and the bar string that we need for the second file can also be found, namely at offset four. It happens to be part of the fuba string, but no one cares because it's just a string. Uh, this is what we want to achieve and that's but we are achieving this by the process of section merging. So what we, what the linker is doing, it reads all the mergeable debug string sections, for instance, in, and merges them in, in such a sort of optimal way um, without using write-out compression, like settled compression or something like this. So, uh, Ah, right, I was a little bit more explaining. Our references into such a section a string is simply represented by an offset into the string section, right? So, and then you can look into this, at that offset into the string section, string section, string section, read everything until the next null character, and that's the string what, that you meant. So, for section merging, therefore, we need to have a process that can tell us, okay, given this input section and this, in, this input offset, give me the output offset where I can find the same string. In, in your mangled, super-merged output section, uh, which is basically what I wrote there. If we don't have the string yet there, then we need to create it and return the new offset. Uh, for instance, there's a third input section that only <laughs> has the small string R. Um, so the input offset is one, the string is R, so the process would then give us uh, uh, okay, I, I'm going to look in my existing string storage that I have already. I will find R at offset five, so this is what I'm going to return to the to the one asking the question, what's the merged offset for the string R? The so, old approach. Uh, what, it, what it's doing is basically taking the, the input uh, string sections, passing all the strings in it, inserting it into a big hash table, uh, and so far about that. Then it comes to the process of, you know, give me the merged offset for this input offset. What it is doing then is because not all offset point into the, at the begin, beginning of strings, right? They can point into the middle of strings. Um, you need to first find the start of the string that you had already inserted into the hash table. Look up into the hash, look up in the hash table where that entry is, and then give back that entry plus the offset that needs adjusting if, in case you found you wanted bar but had gotten only foobar. Then you need to add three. Uh, so what that means is uh, two hash lookups for the, uh, for the same string. 
Uh, and um, the second process, the location processing, is basically uh, jumping randomly around the section. So it, it completely destroys any caching. Um, the relocations are not ordered by, by value, but rather by, by, by offset of the place that is to be relocated. So it, it completely jumps around the, the section. And of course, going backward from a certain memory area, uh, looking for a zero to find the start of the string, uh, is, is also, well, meanwhile, in recent CPUs, that's not so bad anymore, but, but going forward is much better <laughs> for, for the for memory controllers than going backward. Um, so, ah, right, and then after, after this is all clear, uh, there's, a, there's going to be a large sorting process of all the strings in the, in the hash table. Uh, they are suffix sorted and then uh, basically strings that are suffixes of other strings are not actually emitted but rather uh, adjusted to, to refer to the other strings plus some offset. Um, so, two hash lookups per string plus the second hash lookup is going to be essentially from a random memory position each time. Um, goal, <laughs> only doing one hash lookup per string and somehow make it not so jumpy in the, in the, in the, in the second phase where the input offset to output offset mapping needs to be uh, created. So, this is then what I eventually ended up with, um, I still pass all the input sections, put them into the, into the hash table. But what I, what I at the same time remember is an offset to hash entry mapping. So I know then this is here. So I'm, I'm inserting foobar into the hash table, I'm inserting func into the hash table, and what, I'm, and what I then remember is uh, at zero, that's, a, that's an empty entry. At one, there is the hash entry for Fuba, and at eight, there is the hash entry for Funk. It's really a map from integer to hash entries. Um, then I throw away the content, um, and at relocation processing, I need only uh, for each input offset, I need to get the entry that is meant by this. For instance, I could given I want to look up entry uh, offset five for whatever reason because string R was uh, needed. Well, I could do a binary search and eventually end up, uh, ah, it's belonging to hash entry foobar, but not this is uh, offset one. I wanted to have offset five, so therefore I need to add four to that. Um, of course, uh, <laughs> looking in such a mapping, even if it's sorted, we could do binary search. Uh, that was still faster than what was implemented for, uh, earlier, but I, I found a nicer way. Actually, um, the, the problem is, of course, that the, uh, the mapping is depending on the string length, right? The, the first mapping is at offset so and so, and the next mapping is for offset so and so plus string length. And string lengths are arbitrary, right? And, and jumping randomly around, uh, which is why you actually need to search for that offset. You don't need to search for it if you have a fast lookup table. I arbitrarily decided that the usual strings are 32 in length <laughs> and, uh, and make a second table that basically says for every 32 in, in the example it's every third entry, but in reality is every 32nd entry, uh, has basically for each offset of that is divisible by three in this case, I have another entry that points back to the entry that it is covering. So this turned out to be overall the nicest cache efficient and fastest way. Uh, otherwise, uh, the post-processing remains the same. Um, oh, I also used a different hashing function. Uh, uh, yeah, which is also uh, contributing to this. I completely forgot when I wrote the slides. Uh, so, this is what I then got at the end of winter, January time frame. It's, um, only, only four seconds. What time is it? I have completely lost. Yeah, but I also started later. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so four seconds uh, CPU time. That's not bad at all because I'm faster than gold now with or without multi threading. 
Uh, no, without multithreading, not. Um, only without multithreading. I'm getting to the point of mold, and I'm uh, with a little bit uh, squeezing. I'm twice as fast at when when I started. That's good. So, what else? Uh, random, random things all over. I also improved. That is then the three ton. 3.9 seconds. Um, 3.9, 3.8 something seconds. So now it's as fast as gold is with multi threading. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, and then set lip decompression. Uh, this is unfortunately something that you can't optimize. Uh, the, the, the input sections need to be decompressed to be processed. And setlib is implemented as optimal as it can be implemented. Um, so there's only one way, uh, two ways to, uh, to, to, to get a speed up there. Use something else than setlib. For instance, no compression. Um, or set standard. Or use multiple threads. So this is then something I started on the weekend and yesterday night frantically tried to complete. Um, <laughs> So the, the, the last night entry is uh, now finally, it still uses the same uh, uh, CPU time, right? It, it still needs uh, 3.8 seconds uh, to achieve stuff, but it can do a little bit, little bit of its processing. It can do in parallel. So uh, namely the, the decompression and some of the preparation for the section merging I have also multi-threaded. Um, so now uh, 2.7 seconds uh, wall clock time. It's now the second fastest linker in the world, um, uh, <laughs> which brings me to <laughs> where we want to be. Uh, so part of it is already released. Uh, stuff is already committed. The section master is committed will be in the next release. The random stuff, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, Multithreading is terrible because uh, the GNU project, the Binyogis project in particular, wants to support many, many platforms, and not all of them have POSIX threads. Um, so I need to abstract away the, the threading primitives, and yeah, yeah, well, that was simply not possible yesterday night anymore. <laughs> um, so, so this is something I'm going to work, I'm continuing to working on, and eventually it will land in Binutils, but it takes some time. Uh, and then, uh, in the further future, uh, I want to see that Multi-threading also helps with other, for instance, with the relocation processing. In principle, it's separate relocation processing for, a mo for one section is different, uh, independent of relocation processing for, for another section, mostly. It, it, there are some contention points where, uh, where very seldomly, but, but sometimes, it's necessary to adjust global data structures while processing relocations. And, uh, as of course, libbfd is like written 2,000 years ago. Uh, no one thought about threading then. Uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, not so easy um, to to wrap your head around what is possible and what is not possible. And the relocation processing for different targets is split around, split over. Every target has a, uh, has a, has its own implementation of relocation processing. So. It will be tedious work and probably will only be done for target that, targets that interest me. Um, yeah, right, that's basically what I said in my last sentence. Um, yeah, so, uh, second fastest linker in the world.